I did a previous video here on O2 sensor basics, uh, what they are and um, how they're replaced. I won't repeat all that here, but uh, what I didn't cover was downstream O2 sensors uh, on cars with catalytic converters, uh, which is, of course, most modern cars um, which use secondary oxygen sensors placed in the exhaust after the cat. Um, now these sensors are mostly there to check that the cat is operating correctly, uh, although some engine management systems will use them to inform tune a little bit as well. But they're uh, wrapped up with the cat for the most part, and, um, and we can learn a few things about them from this and what they should look like when in use. So uh, you can use this knowledge to diagnose a few things, uh, either a faulty downstream O2 sensor or a degraded catalytic converter, for example. Um, now, obviously, you would firstly check that you don't have a dead downstream sensor um, that would be giving you a flat line voltage um, when you look at it on a scan tool uh, or eventually it will set a check engine light. Here's a demo of a uh, gentle cruise with a warmed up exhaust uh, just monitoring the downstream O2 sensor along with RPM and uh, still in the head temperature. Uh, so this O2 sensor we would normally expect to look much like um, what is pictured. And the first thing to note is that there is no rapid switching from low to high, back to low, back to high, back to low, um, as with an upstream sensor. And this is because the catalytic converter is doing its job and completely smoothing out the oxygen so that the um, O2 level is no longer the product of what's being sort of focused in on by the uh, ECU tweaking fuel injection on an ongoing basis. So that's interesting. Uh, but the other thing is that this reading, um, as you'll know from O2 sensor basics, is rich and uh, that's to say that the sensor is reading low oxygen and that's a good thing because if the uh, converter is working properly um, then the oxidation process which occurs inside the cat inside the catalytic converter uh, should result in less free o2 leaving the converter than entered it um, which means that the downstream o2 sensor should be biased slightly rich on average uh, now this is a pretty good average that you can see, it might be uh, less obvious uh, in your case, it may be switching a little bit, but in aggregate the voltage should be uh, above the halfway level, mostly. And while O2 sensors get lazy as they age, uh, I talked about that in the other video, I'd suggest it's not as important in the downstream sensor for the uh, reasons that should be obvious. Uh, even when in prime condition, the downstream O2 sensor is just not expected to switch quickly. So it just doesn't matter as much as with the upstream ones. Now one thing we can do uh, is run the engine at about uh, 2000 RPM for a little while, um, whilst uh, monitoring both up and downstream sensors. And what you want to do is compare the switching behavior of both sensors and you can see that my downstream sensor is uh, basically just not switching at all, it's staying up. Um, but you might see some switches, uh, that would be acceptable. Uh, and the rule is that for um, each, for every 10 upstream switches, uh, when I say switch, that's a, a crossing of the voltage from high to low or low to high. But for every 10 upstream switches, the uh, downstream should be uh, less than um, this should be less than 70% of uh, that number, preferably a lot less. Uh, so you can count the switches from a screen grab or whatever and compare them. And of course this is assuming that the upstream sensor itself is not failed or uh, badly lazy. And assuming that that's um, a safe assumption, then this would tell you that your cat is working properly. So that's about it, um, although the combination of the cat and the downstream O2 sensor can perform a few other tricks too. Uh, for example, you can uh, diagnose some engine misfires by including fuel trims in the um, scan tool data. Uh, for instance, an ignition misfire will send the air-fuel mixture from the misfiring cylinder into the exhaust and past the O2 sensors and cat 
and what will happen is the uh, short term fuel trim will go up a little uh, but not majorly uh, while the downstream O2 sensor voltage can read significantly rich so if you monitor for a small spike in short term fuel trim and a larger jump in um, uh, sensor 2 downstream voltage uh, you can consider an ignition misfire and by the way, I'm not demoing an actual misfire happening here on the video. I'm just showing you what the basic scan tool setup might look like if I was watching for one. Uh, also a misfire from a, a lack of fuel because of an injector or fuel pump problem. Uh, it, something like that causing a misfire um, will dump a cylinder full of air into the exhaust and that will spike short-term fuel trim well up and the, uh, the cat will have an excess of oxygen which in turn will floor the, um, the downstream O2 sensor voltage. So you can read some of those smoke signals and you can get some interesting insights uh, just, from, um, just from monitoring the one sensor, really. Okay, I just wanted to uh, cover off some basics about downstream oxygen sensors. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.